words uh, and apologize. I have to make a statement and race to the floor for a vote that I'm a little late on. Members are waiting on. I want to thank my colleague Tammy Duckworth for her testimony today. Brad Schneider, thank you for coming over from the House side. Mayor Nancy Rotering, I led the witnesses, did an extraordinary job. Illinois State Representative Bob Morgan, Lake County State's Attorney Eric Reinhardt, and uh, Sheriff Eidelberg. And I'm sure there are others, elected officials, and I apologize if I don't, don't go through the list. Why did Highland Park make such an impact on America? It was the 4th of July. It's America's Day. It's a family day. We're proud to be in public, and be seen with our neighbors. We're proud to be part of this nation. And it was in the middle of that celebration, after a long, dry period of the pandemic, that in Highland Park and in many other communities, people came out for the first time with a feeling of joy and relief, which turned to tragedy in a matter of seconds. And it turned to tragedy because of a mass shooting. I've heard a lot of explanations for it. There are no explanations. To think that in the United States of America, we give to any individual the capacity to wreak that kind of damage and havoc on a great town like Highland Park is unspeakable and un-American. question was raised today by one of my colleagues on the other side of the podium about the seriousness of this hearing and the seriousness of our efforts. It is deadly serious, I would say to him. Seven people died on July 4th in Highland Park. Scores were injured, and the trauma that it imposed on that community will be with it for many years to come. We are serious in saying America can, reach, can do better. America must do better. It is inexcusable, unacceptable, un-American for us to sell combat weapons to a man like the shooter in Highland Park. There is no excuse. There is no Second Amendment excuse to allow that sort of thing to happen. I'm going to do what I can. I voted for the first assault weapons ban. I'll do it again. And I want to thank the mayor and all the residents of Highland Park for standing together today to say to America, we went through a terrible occurrence, but we learned from that that we've got to come together as a nation to solve this problem once and forever. I want to turn it over to Congressman Schneider and then Mayor Rotering. And then once again, I apologize that I have to leave and vote on the floor. Mayor. Thank you, Senator. And um, I want to first speak not as a congressman, but as a resident of Highland Park. It's my hometown. Our town was devastated on July 4th in a heinous attack with a weapon of war in which seven people were murdered and dozens of others were wounded, many still grievously suffering from their wounds two weeks ago. As a resident of Highland Park, I am also proud of the leadership of our community, our mayor, Rotaring, our city council, our state representatives, our sheriffs. In a moment of great tragedy, the people behind me stood up with great strength. And today we saw that strength as in the Senate there was a hearing. Simultaneously with what's happening in the Senate, I'm also proud to say that in the House, the Judiciary Committee this week is marking up an assault weapons ban, H.R. 1808. And I am hopeful that that will come to the floor next week or someday soon. And we can take steps to get these weapons of war off our streets. They have no place in our communities. Why does anyone at a 4th of July celebration need an assault weapon? Why does anyone in a grocery store in Buffalo or a school in Uvalde, Texas, or in any other community at any other time need a weapon that in a matter of seconds can fire off literally hundreds of deadly rounds, not just killing people, but devastating and destroying their bodies. It is time for this body to act, Congress to act, House and Senate. We can get these weapons out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them. We can make sure that families at a parade, kids at their school, worshipers in a church, synagogue, or mosque, 
can do so in peace. Right before here, I came here, we heard the uh, First Lady of, of Ukraine speak uh, to Congress. She said she, all she is asking is to keep her children safe, to know that they can go to school to complete their studies. All we're asking here is to keep our children safe. Let's take action. Let's ban these assault weapons. Thank you. And I turn now over to Senator, Senator Duckworth. Well, thank you for being here. And I, I want to thank Senator Durbin for holding this very important hearing. I, I want to follow up on some of the arguments that you hear about why we should not ban assault weapons. Um, we need an armed militia or the ability for the citizenry, citizenry to be armed. Banning assault weapons would not actually get rid of all the weapons in this country. And in fact, we could still have an armed citizenry. Um, I've had a colleague who say that, well, some of his constituents likes to hunt prairie dogs. An AR-15 is not the tool to hunt prairie dogs. If you want to hunt prairie dogs, you take a 22, and that's a weapon that you would use. I've heard folks say, well, I need it to hunt with. I, I want to go hunt moose or elk or bear. Again, that is not what an AR-15 is used for. An AR-15 was designed to be a weapon to be used in combat. It literally was designed and then adapted into the M16, which is what the military carried up until it was replaced by the M4 carbine, essentially the same weapon except with a collapsible lighter stock. I know because I carried one for, six, for 23 years of my military service. And then I get the question of, well, you know, we need to, we need to keep an eye on, on folks with mental health issues and we need um, better tracking and better mental health services. I absolutely agree with all of that. But the bottom line is the AR-15 and its variants are designed to kill people. It is designed to decimate the human body. There's no need for AR-15s or other assault weapons and high-capacity magazines to be available to the civilian population. And it is marketed. It is marketed as a military weapon. Here is a, a picture from Daniel Defense where they are selling this uh, 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 DDM4 V7, which is an assault weapon, for $2,000. Um, and prominent in their display is that this is to military specifications. This is to mil spec. And by the way, if you can't afford the $2,000 price tag, we have people who will finance it, and you can buy it for as low as $87.30 30 a month. This is how people who should not have access to these weapons get these weapons. This same Daniel Defense Company that is marketing this, just less than two weeks before um, the Uvalde shooting, said specifically what the strategy of the gun manufacturers are, which is to train our children. This is what they posted. And the ad says on Twitter, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And this is what they want our kids to be trained and to not depart for from when they're older. They cowardly took this down after Uvalde. If they're so proud of it, then leave it up. You know, we can go after tobacco companies for targeting children. Why are we not, why are we not banning these assault weapons? I'm tired, and I'm angry. And we should all be angry that these weapons are still on the streets of this great nation. These weapons of war. These are not weapons designed to hunt wildlife. This is, these are not weapons designed to defend your home. I've heard that argument. I need this to defend my home. If you want to defend your home, a shotgun would be a wep better weapon for you to use to defend your home than an AR-15 or any one of its variants. In the testimony today, I held up uh, uh, on my phone and I just looked at the price of the lower uh, uh, assembly that you can buy in order to build your own uh, uh, assault weapon like was done in the Dayton shooting where they, he essentially, that, that murderer essentially built uh, a pistol uh, that was an assault weapon. 59 bucks is what that lower assembly, two mil spec costs. And you too can have an assault weapon. Enough. 
enough. I don't want our kids to die. I don't want our kids, I don't want children being orphaned. I don't want people being killed protecting their kids. I don't want Americans to be dying on the streets of this great nation on the 4th of July when we are celebrating life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Assault weapons, these assault weapons have denied my constituents and thousands of Americans their rights as enshrined in the Constitution as well. It's time to ban them, both the assault weapons and the high-capacity magazines. Thank you. Um, it was my pleasure. It was my honor. I appreciated the opportunity to speak today on behalf of all of the communities that have been besieged by mass gun shootings. Um, I think it's important to recognize behind me are my current council members and those who were with me in 2013 when we banned assault weapons and large capacity magazines in Highland Park. But we're not an island. And we did everything we could to reflect the values of our community, to stand up for safety and to stand up against having these combat weapons in our community. But as I mentioned earlier, as local governments, we cannot do it alone. We are only as protected as our weakest gun law neighbors. We are surrounded by states that have far more lenient gun laws. And until those states are brought into line with the rest of us, we will continue to have this scourge, this stain on our existence as a great nation. So to that end, we need a federal ban. We need a ban on assault weapons. We need a ban on large capacity magazines. Yes, they have done great work in the past in terms of the Congress and the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Great first step. Let's do more. This isn't where we stop. This is just where we need to move forward. We need to do everything we can so that we don't have more children like Cooper Roberts fighting for their lives. So we don't have more children like Aidan McCarthy now wondering what his parents would have been like as he grew up. These are heartbreaking stories that aren't necessary. These weapons need to leave our communities. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm now introducing Illinois State Representative Bob Morgan. Thank you, Mayor Rotering, um, and to all of those neighbors. We have a lot of Highland Park neighbors here uh, standing behind me, standing off to the side for those of you who cannot see it. Uh, my name is Bob Morgan. I'm the Illinois State Representative for the 58th District, which represents Highland Park. I want to start by thanking Senator Durbin, Senator Duckworth, for inviting us to be here today to talk about the July 4th shooting. But more importantly, what we can do, what Congress can do to make sure this happens to no other community around the country. Congress took a very, very strong step just a week ago, as a number of us were here for the Safer Communities Act. That bipartisan le legislation has a number of very, very vital components one of which that matters most to me is creation of a legal, uh, a creation of a federal crime for those who are trafficking guns across state lines. Uh, those of us in Highland Park, we're a 20 minute drive from the state of Wisconsin, which has more lax gun laws. So the gun trafficking is a very, very real issue for Highland Park and for those who are trafficking guns from Wisconsin to Chicago. So that's a very significant step. But of course we need to do more. Of course we need to do more. Of course Congress needs to step up. Of course, needs a con Congress in the House today is working on a committee hearing, of course, on assault weapon bans. We need to pass that at the congressional level. That is the best way to make sure no other community experiences this violence and this trauma. But Illinois will not stand by and wait for that to happen. Illinois will, will take actions. Illinois has already taken great steps to ban ghost guns, to pass universal background checks starting in 2024. Perhaps we need to move that up. We need to pass significant gun reforms in Illinois. And mark my words, we will. These residents of Highland Park who are traumatized, those of us who are there for the parade, we will never forget the trauma that we experienced. We will never forget the gunshots. We will never forget what we saw in the minutes and hours afterwards. We have residents who, as referenced earlier, who are still in the hospital healing from their physical wounds. But our psychological trauma will always stay with us. And we will not quit. We will not quit until we pass state laws to protect other communities to make sure this never happens again. Thank you. I think we also have Lake County State's Attorney Eric Reinhardt. Thank you very much. My name is Eric Reinhardt. I am the State's Attorney of Lake County, Illinois, where uh, this 
terrible attack on July 4th happened. Uh, I am the prosecutor involved in prosecuting the case. I was honored to be invited here by Senator Durbin and stand with him and uh, all of the members who spoke today from the United States Senate to talk about how to make all communities safer. Every community deserves to feel safe. And some of the questions, particularly uh, from the chair, Chair Durbin, and then uh, Senator Booker, began to talk about how we can do this across the board in every single community and how many of these issues are not unrelated. My job as the state's attorney is to talk about policy, practice, and law that make people safer in Lake County. As we continue to think about that in this hearing today, I want to continue to express my condolences to those who lost loved ones, to those who will never be the same after this terrible attack, and also to thank the first responders. The first responders who many senators referred to ran towards the danger, who Mayor Rotering testified beautifully about doing everything right. They had an urgency about them that day. They didn't care about race or class. They ran to protect people. And I hope that the entire country, that all of us as leaders, can have that same urgency to protect everybody, regardless of race or class, regardless of where people live, regardless of those communities. I heard this, these references to Chicago and these references to, to street violence as if these things are not all related. Many of the witnesses made from both parties talked about how we need to invest in our communities talked about violence and eruption and how we also need to look at why we are in a place, why we are in a space where many people have been convinced that there is so much danger around them that gun sales go up. Senator Durbin spoke about that at the very beginning. He said these gun sales are going up. We have to ask ourselves, why are these sales going up? What is the conversations that we're having in the press and on cable news and with talking heads and in our communities? about why the sale of guns is going up everywhere. We have to invest in every community everywhere to stop this lie that we all have to be afraid of each other, that we all have to live in fear. That is what is driving gun sales up. That is what is driving up assault weapon sales. That is what is driving up guns being flooded into all of our communities, and that is what we have to turn around. We must finally move together as a country to respond to the urgency of gun violence by investing in communities everywhere. We don't have to be a country ruled by fear. We can be ruled by something better. We can be ruled by hope. And we cannot allow this fear that is frankly hitting every community today continue to allow assault weapons to be sold. We need to ban assault weapons. We need to ban higher capacity magazines. We need to have universal background checks. Those points that we have all believe in, so many Americans believe in, we need to do that to make our communities everywhere safer. But that's not going to work if we don't also invest in every community to end the gun violence that I see in Lake County. Since the July 4th shooting, there have been other people killed by gun violence in Lake County murders that I am investigating now, what we would call everyday violence. The grueling and grinding of everyday violence must stop. The fear-mongering must stop. We must come together as a country to end this public health epidemic. July 4th was supposed to be about freedom. The, people who, the seven people who lost their freedom and, frankly, the families who will always be impacted by this, their freedom matters, and we have to move forward so that everyone can truly be free. Thank you. And I guess we'll take questions. We'll take questions and answers now. Uh, I, I have a, a question. It, you all heard the Republican senators today, and they did seem up to the point of reducing gun violence by reducing the number of guns. As a practical matter, you all know it's a 50-50 Senate, Merritt Rotering, uh, knowing the reality of the equation and having what you heard today are an, an example of what the uh, challenges on assault weapon ban. Uh, what would you uh, think of the assessment of actually getting them?
frankly, it was a bit of an out-of-body experience to hear the other side of the reality that was being presented. Um, there was a lot of conversation that had nothing to do with how do we reduce mass shootings, which was the purpose of this hearing. To that end, we're not going to stop. We're not going to give up. Um, I think, unfortunately, there are going to be a lot more communities that are impacted, and, and frankly, I, I share great concerns with those mayors and those communities as we move forward if this, uh, this gridlock continues. You heard Dr. Hunter say, this is a public health issue. This is not just a crime issue. This is an um, impact that has such far-ranging costs, not just in human life and in psychological toll, but in terms of how we as a country move forward. So I, as State's Attorney Reinhardt said, have hope. We will continue to push forward. We will continue to advocate. And sadly, I fear that more communities are going to have to deal with the suffering that Highland Park has dealt with. Maybe those senators will get more letters from their constituents saying this has to stop. It has to stop. I'd like to see a successful vote on an assault weapon ban in the Senate. My reaction was pretty much to hear what Senator Hirono said. Unfortunately, we are not an island. Hawaii is an island. Hawaii has low gun violence. We are not an island, and as I stated earlier, we are only as safe as the weakest gun laws in our surrounding states. We have Missouri, we have Indiana, we have Wisconsin. We need a federal act that can take care of our entire nation, and until that point, we will be continuing to have these conversations. We're, we're not an island. We're not an island. Excuse me, but you're not an island. Right. Pardon me. Um, the point, I think you made it before, but um, can you remind me, when you talked today that the vote reflected your values, did you pass the ban and fight for it in 2013 because you thought assault weapons were a issue in the city and that you had been? Or I guess I'm saying explain what you meant when you said we did the ban to reflect our values. Right. A little bit on the history of the assault weapons ban that Highland Park passed in 2013. In 2013, we were given a 10-day window of opportunity from the Illinois General Assembly within the concealed carry law that they had just passed. It was a unique part of the sausage making of legislation, frankly. And so we, uh, Paul Frank is here with us. He was a city council member at the time. He's now on the Lake County Board. Um, raised this issue, and we all looked at the opportunity that we had to act swiftly and clearly in stating those values. This was just in the wake of Sandy Hook, and we took maybe 30 seconds to say, yes, we needed to do this. We needed to reflect where we stood as a community in opposition to having combat weapons coming through and, and doing this devastation to school children and, frankly, anybody else in any community. So we did pass the assault weapons ban and a large capacity magazine ban. The language in that ordinance, Steve Elrod is with us, our corporation counsel who helped us draft that, was based off of two things. Basically, Cook County had an ordinance that had passed um, litigation, and then that was, pa that was based on the federal assault weapons ban that had been in place from 1994 to 2004. So we had a ban that had already been basically in place at the federal level and put that in place just through that unique small opportunity that was provided by the Illinois General Assembly. And I think it's important to note that following the adjudication of that case, we did get sued by the NRA, Friedman versus City of Highland Park, Illinois. We went up to the Seventh Circuit. Judge Easterbrook wrote the opinion. We, our ordinance was found to be constitutional. There was an effort to take it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Writ was denied at the Supreme Court. That law is still on the books. We've been asked by several municipalities for a copy of that ordinance, and I send it. But I say at this point, there is now state preemption in the way of you as a community being able to pass this law. 
That being said, I have been fighting literally since 2017, 2018 to get the state to remove that preemption. But frankly, at this point, and, and following Uvalde, I, I recommenced and wrote letters to the governor, the Senate president, and the speaker of the Illinois House asking that they look at a statewide ban. That's a first step. We need a federal ban because we know that people will just go to Missouri. They'll just go to Indiana, quick drive. But at this point, on our books, we still have this assault weapons and large capacity magazine ban. Okay, uh, Representative uh, Morgan, there are supermajority Democrats in the state house and the state senate. There's been talk of a special session. Does your state house have the votes to pass an assault weapon ban right now? Yeah, there's a lot of conversation happening as we speak about an assault weapon ban as well as a variety of other steps. Um, as recently as yesterday, we saw the Illinois State Police pass uh, introduce an emergency rule to address our FOID laws and try to address some of the gaps that we've found. Uh, we are working very, very swiftly, and you're going to hear more news on that very soon. Well, do you think that, uh, the votes exist right now? And, and if you do the special session, is it 60 or 71? If you want an effective, uh, uh, immediate effective date in the, in the special session, you would need 71 votes anytime between now and the end of December. We're still working on it. We have, uh, I believe, at last count, just over 55 uh, co-sponsors of an assault weapon ban in the House. Um, again, if we passed it with 60, it would be effective in a year, uh, July 1 of 2023. Um, we're having that conversation now. Well, it depends on when we, we come back in the General Assembly, because at that point we might have other things that we're voting on as a package that are going to be, it's a lot of moving parts, and so I'll have more information on that, and you'll have more information on that very, very soon. Yeah, uh, we're, we need to get justice for every victim in this case. Uh, the initial charges were so that we could obviously begin the prosecution uh, of, this, uh, of this offender, and we did that with seven homicide charges. There will be additional charges regarding everyone uh, that was shot, uh, and so there will be multiple char there'll be multiple more charges uh, filed in the coming weeks against him that take into account uh, the number of victims and the, the massive amount of people he hurt. And what is your latest So we, we have, yeah, we, we have dozens. I don't want to give the specific count. They'll be released in the, they'll be released in the indictments. We had a lot of people in hospitals. We had a lot of people who came to the uh, FBI center late, later. The FBI and Red Cross did an amazing job. The, the counts will be official in the indictments. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.